please call the roll. Cheryl Lombardi? Present. Mrs. Gerast? Here. Mr. Connell? Mr. Connell? He's muted. He's muted. Uh, oh, I, still, I didn't hear anything. Uh, I see him though. I'm here. Mrs. Johannes? I'm here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mrs. Mayo? Here. And Mrs. Botta stated she would not be present. Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I know we have some guests. Welcome. Um, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. To the and to the republic, republic for which, for which it stands, stands. One, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Justice for all. So we have great news up next, that the uh, North Smithfield Public School Teacher of the Year, Natalie O'Brien. Yay. Yay. Mr. McGee, would you Yay. mind saying a few words? No, I actually Thank have you. a nice, nice little write-up for Natalie here. Great. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to Mrs. Natalie O'Brien, this year's North Smithfield School District Teacher of the Year. Natalie is a 20-year veteran of the North Smithfield High School, beginning her career in the year 2000. She's a member of the Social Studies Department, of which she has been chairperson for the past 10 years. She has served as a mentor at the James Madison Legacy Project Institute at Suffolk University. She created a community service program that led students to become active citizens and motivated them to get involved in local, state, national, and international projects through the Center for Civic Education. She actively works with students and administration to plan, coordinate, direct, and implement a variety of events and programs at North Smithfield High School. Natalie has engaged her honors government students in the rigorous and competitive We the People program and is responsible for bringing 14 different classes to the national finals in Washington, D.C. after first winning the Rhode Island State Competition each year. She has co-chaired the NIAS Steering Committee, worked diligently to prepare North Smithfield High School for their decennial visit. She teaches honors American government, U.S. history, AP government, and politics, which implements a variety of techniques that challenge students to be critical thinkers and active learners. Mrs. O'Brien engages students in political debates with elected and government officials. She expands beyond the traditional text by incorporating primary source documents into the curriculum. She also incorporates current events throughout her teaching to bring real life situations into the classroom setting and show students the modern day uses of constitution and its principles. In addition, Natalie, Natalie was coach of the girls and boys tennis for, for many years. Although this list is impressive, perhaps Natalie's most notable contribution to our school is her infectious enthusiasm and energy she brings to both our students and staff. She not only promotes and advocates for special competitions involving civics, but she leads the group in fundraising, which will allow every, every student to participate. Natalie is well respected and admired by students and teachers alike. She is always willing to assist and join us in subcommittees in an effort to improve our school. She herself is a resident of our town and has two daughters in our school system. It is with great pr pleasure and pride that I nominate Mrs. Natalie O'Brien as 2021 North Smithfield School Teacher of the Year. Yay! Congratulations. Not only Thank that, you, just, just to add one, she's just a, she's just a nice person. <laughs> that, that makes a big difference. Not, she, not only is she super smart and, and, and engaged, she's just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful person. So I couldn't be happier than to have her as Teacher of the Year. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I certainly have prepared a couple remarks that I'd like to share, but I want to start by saying that now I realize how frightened my students were when we did We the People through Google Zoom this year, because this is very daunting to be in front of so many people and, and you know, have to kind of share your thoughts. But I would like to just take a couple minutes and, you know, just speak about um, what a tremendous honor this is for me. 
Um, and part of the reason, honestly, that it is such a big honor is because all of you actually know what it is that I do um, every single day. So it's not just filling out paperwork and submitting something. It is people who I teach with and work with who felt that I truly deserve this award, which is incredible. And um, what I've learned over the years is that teaching starts with learning. Um, I remember my parents first, as most of us do, and I don't know if they said do your homework, um, but I watched them do their work, and they taught me to value work. Uh, to quote Hillary Clinton, she said it does take a village, and I love the support of my first teachers over the years, and, and those are my parents. And as a kid, I wanted to please my teachers because they were everything, and they should be, and I have learned so much more than I have taught. Um, as I morphed into adulthood, I experienced the world. Um, I learned while teaching English in Japan that living in a foreign country can be difficult. And that experience taught me that it is hard to be the other. Uh, sometimes people on the subway would move away from me because I was different. But that was an important lesson. And learning from something is always possible. Um, I taught in the Bronx, and I learned that teachers are dedicated and many work in very difficult circumstances. The first teacher that I worked with had very few resources, but dedicated endless hours to her students. She could have gone to any different district and earned a lot more pay, but she didn't. Um, and I also learned that there should be more diversity in communities of color. You want to see yourself and your teacher and your administrator. Um, I moved to NSHS, and I learned first from Harry Demers, right? Teaching come, comes first. Kids want to learn. We can change lives, and we should always be positive. He was a really wonderful mentor. Um, our faculty is amazing. I learn from them every day. Maybe more project-based learning. Maybe more patience. Um, find a new way to assess a student. I've learned to reach out to specialists. Teaching is an art, and, and I teach with artists. Create a club, call kids at home, go to events, go to government. Uh oh. I I can't hear anything. No, just Natalie, we'll, that you run out of time. Natalie will come back. Okay. I have faith. I have okay. faith. Fully in the... Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay. Um. I truly appreciate their honest feedback at the end of the school year, their kind hellos and goodbyes, and even, you know, I teach in a high school, sometimes there are awkward silence in the hallway. Um, but we really do make a difference in the lives of students. Um, last week, seniors came to Rita Vieira's house to say goodbye. Students celebrated Regina McAdams' birthday standing outside of NSHS. Kim Rawson put balloons on the doors of all AP students um, to prepare them for their big exam. And I have a friend around my age who still makes the same dishes that she was taught by Pat Kalenka, right? So it takes, a uh, it takes a village. And now with young daughters, I have learned so much from my peers who teach at the elementary level. They have a hard task and they are amazing. It's not just the calm and loving voice that they use, but the fact that they are dedicated not just to content, but to teaching and reaching and building every citizen in our young people. And I learn from tremendous educators every day, and I appreciate this honor. But I will always be a learner. So finally, I have learned that it's okay to reach out to others because a strong support system is the key to success. And I hope, and I hope that is us for our students. Um, for me, it's this community, the school district, mentors like Mike Trophy, who helped me with the Center for Civic Education, and of course, my husband, who is here listening. <laughs> Um, I believe that the teaching profession is the greatest job. Um, we make a difference and it matters. And truly teachers who love their job can change the world. Um, as Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. And that's the only thing that ever has. That is us, our profession. And I'm so pleased to just briefly represent this tremendous district and this profession. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And that, folks, is why Natalie O'Brien is Teacher of the Year. <laughs> I hope you were able to hear me. I, I'm struggling with Wi-Fi, but it, it was, thank you so much for everything. You were perfect. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, Peg Vodder is now uh, on the meeting. She's been here for a little while. I didn't want to interrupt Ms. O'Brien. Okay. Um, uh, 
Principal McGee, if I could just say a quick word. I mean, it, it, what a wonderful choice. All of the good work Natalie does for our students. You know, We the People is an amazing program. You know, she's always there for the students. It's, it's just unbelievable. You couldn't have picked anybody better. So congratulations and thank you. Absolutely. And, and I actually would just like to say that this is a very well-deserved award. And as we can tell from everything that you just said, your enthusiasm for everything that you do is so evident and is catching. And I think it's no wonder that the kids and the students want to be involved with you and have fun while they learn. So we thank you for that. Congratulations. And I have to say something. Uh, my three children, that you were the first face they saw. And you changed their lives. You made them care about school. You made it clear that it's okay to work really hard, but still enjoy what you're learning. And um, you, you put them on that path through their entire high school career. So we're living proof of the great work that you do every day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This is truly a great opportunity, and, and I look forward to everything that comes down the path because of it. So, thank you. Great. That's great. Well, tomorrow I get to plaster your face and congratulations all over Facebook. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> That's exciting. So, I'll try to pick a good picture of you. Mm -hmm. We look through good. lots of pictures. I shared one with Mr. McGee that I, I thought was... If you approve of it, then he can forward it to me, and that's the one we'll post. <laughs> My daughter, Mr. O'Brien, too, and we the people, and they really enjoyed it a lot. And kind of echoing what Peg, what, what, what uh, my fellow school committee member, Ms. Vada, said, I think the same experience with my kids. They really enjoyed working with Mr. O'Brien and just doing the things that they do, not just in We the People, but in the whole class and, and in senior. I know Amanda was in senior year too, so she's just been a, she has been a, she is a great teacher for us and we're lucky to have her. Did you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. She's great. <laughs> so Brian, thank you and congratulations again. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. Uh, unless there's an objection uh, for the next item on the agenda, I know there's people um, who want to hear this, um, and it's the last item on the agenda, I'd like to bring it up. It's the presentation and discussion on diversity training for employees and discussion of established programs to help everyone understand diversity in the North Smithfield Public Schools. Okay. For that one, um, I've asked uh, uh, Claire Arnold, our assistant superintendent and of uh, curriculum, to address that. The, 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 the pieces we've been working on, we put in place already, and to basically explain uh, where we're taking it. So, uh, Ms. Arnold, if you wouldn't mind. Well, do you mind, uh, Mr. St. Jean, do you mind if I say a few words? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Mr. Superintendent, and all the, all the people gathered here tonight. So tonight's agenda has this item calling for the presentation and discussion of training and programs related to diversity. Now, that item's on the agenda per my request, and I just wanted to explain why I asked for it to be on tonight. The last meeting of our school committee was on the 27th of May. And that was two days after the murder of George Floyd by a former Minneapolis police officer. Since then, we have seen an outpouring of worldwide passion and compassion, which is helping open eyes and drive conversation. I asked for this agenda item, and I thank the chair and the superintendent for agreeing to put it on the agenda, because I believe North Smithfield should take part in these conversations as well. Our town is majority white. That's not a complaint or a boast, it's just a fact. All of the people who live in North Smithfield come from a variety of different upbringings and are leading a variety of different lives from one another. But as a community, we mostly have this one thing in common. Now, I've lived in other towns and cities where school districts tried to explore the perspectives and histories and struggles of other cultures and races, but came up short. North Smithfield's school district is no
known for being innovative and thoughtful with how it approaches educating our students. I mean, the speed in which the district was able to bring a quality distance learning program online is just one of the most recent examples. And I asked Assistant Superintendent Arnold to speak more about the district's approach to diversity tonight. Now, I took the opportunity to talk with Mrs. Arnold the other day as well, just to ask some questions and get her perspective first. By the time the conversation ended, I felt very good about the things North Smithfield School Department has done, is doing, and will do to provide our students a well-rounded education of a global perspective. Now, as with most good news, it flies under the radar. I think our teachers and our administrators should be celebrated for the work they put in to continuously build a more reflective curriculum. And I hope after Ms. Arnold's presentation, you feel the same. Now, we all know this is an ongoing effort, and we know there's always more to be done to build a better tomorrow. But I have faith in our district and our town, and I believe days like today are just part of what will become an ongoing conversation. So thank you again very much for letting me speak and thank you for putting this on the agenda for me. And, and, and Mr. Jones, if I could add, I, I was very pleased that you had asked to put this on the agenda because this is something that we had been quietly working on uh, prior to the events of the past few weeks. And I, I, I can tell you, uh, Mrs. Arnold, myself, we all started our careers in urban ed where diversity was a, a fact of life. It was a daily reminder, walking in the halls, being in the classrooms. So uh, for, for myself, after 25 years at Pawtucket and Central Falls with a degree in anthropology and teaching English as a second language, I have to admit, North Smithfield was a very different environment for me. And you know, one of the things that I, I would say is that um, we have to work, uh, uh, take that extra step to bring diversity and understanding into the community because this, it, it, it isn't uh, pervasive around us with, uh, uh, like we had in Providence, Pawtucket, and Woonsocket, and Central Falls. Uh, tremendous, dynamic, innovative, tremendous communities. Not that North Smithfield isn't, but it doesn't have that diversity component. Uh, which, which is unfortunate. So, you know, we're looking at trying to make up for some of that. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Arnold. And, and just Paul, for the record, um, um, you, uh, I just want to let you know that I also reached out to the superintendent, mm -hmm. um, but oh, you good. did beat okay. me to the punch. Oh. So that's great. <laughs> um, to get this on the agenda, when I had the conversation with the superintendent, they said, you know, Paul's looking into it, and I'm sure that there's other committee members who have also looked into it. So thank you for taking the lead. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. You beat him by two days. <laughs> so um, good good evening, everyone. And I, I had a great discussion with Mr. Jones. And when I um, when we spoke and after we finished speaking, we were talking about the school committee meeting. I'd asked if he wanted like a formal presentation with slides or just more of a, a conversational tone in what we had on the phone. And we talked for quite a while. Um, and he, he and I both felt like instead of a formal presentation, I would just share with you um, where we are, what we do, and where we're going. And so it will take a few minutes because we do so much, but I also want to honor and recognize what we do before we talk about what we're um, going to do moving forward. And so, um, I, as you know, we as a school community want our students to become respectful, responsible, empathetic citizens who respect and re admire others with uh, diverse backgrounds. And to do this, it's not a one and done initiative or a separate standalone cur curriculum. We can't just implement one thing and think that we're going to solve um, a complex problem. And, and it's so much more complex and deeper than that. It has to be woven into all facets of educating K-12 students and knitting programs um, and initiatives together into a cohesive system. And we do this in a few ways, and it's through materials adoption, it's through units of study and course offerings, professional development programs, initiatives, and strategic planning. So I'm gonna take a few minutes just to tell you a, a few examples of what we do and how we do it. Um, and I'll start with materials adoption. We take great care in choosing materials that have 
a mixture of classic and con contemporary texts, materials that include multiple perspectives, authors of texts that represent diverse cultures and backgrounds, as well as materials that include supports for students with learning differences and uh, English language learners. And one example is a uh, recent adoption of our middle school ELO ELA program, our English language arts program, called my literally called My Perspectives. It's a high quality instructional material. It balances fiction and nonfiction. Teachers facilitate discussions for students to share deep background knowledge, and teachers instruct in a way that helps students connect with the text, empathize with characters using complex comp comprehension strategies. Students communicate with one another in discussion format and become active learners and active listeners knowing there's no one answer to a complex question. Another example is a, a recent adoption at our middle school also is a, is a health curriculum. And within the health curriculum um, at, the, at the middle school, there's a, a new um, or an updated social and emotional health uh, unit and it focuses on empathy, empathy and conflict resolution. Um, in that there's goal setting, there's listening, expressing emotions and thought, identifying and uh, managing strong feelings, decision making, problem solving, managing con conflicts, choosing positive relationships, um, helping others, accessing resources. So um, social emotional health, empathy, um, uh, cultural di diversity all have to be embedded within our, our programming. Um, at the high school, I'll give you some examples. Um, the ninth grade English curriculum has a unit called Triumph Over Adversity. It explores the historic and contemporary race relations in our country, specifically texts that explore white, black, Native American experiences. Um, the 11th grade curriculum looks at class within American society. And our 11th and 12th grade class offerings for English include um, exploring genocide, as well as a course called The Right to Speak, and it's W-R-I-T-E, The Right to Speak marginalized voices and multicultural narratives. Some programs that we incorporate at our, at our elementary level um, and programs is a, an important piece of this when we're weaving our cohesive system is um, Open Circle. So Open Circle uh, is an evidence-based social emotional learning curriculum and professional development. It's implemented at NSES. Teachers hold morning meetings where children learn skills for recognizing and, and managing emotions, empathy, positive relationships, and problem solving. And so basically it's a 15 to 20 minute classroom meetings led by the teacher and they include group discussions, role playing, literature, community building activities. Students learn to practice um, the SEL skills as listening and cooperating, speaking up, calming down, expressing anger appropriately, recognizing destructive behavior, uh, problem solving, problem solving, and uh, lessons are then reinforced throughout the school day and beyond by teachers, administrators, and support staff. We also have initiatives throughout our district, and, and I couldn't possibly name all of them, but I will um, recognize a few. We have the REACH Recognition Program, where our staff members recognize students that ex exemplify core values of respect, effort, accountability, cooperation, and honesty. High Five Fridays, Getting to Know You Cafe, um, where small groups of children at the elementary uh, by grade level eat with um, the principal, assistant principal, or school counselor, social worker, or psychologist. Um, they have Kelso's Choice at the elementary school, the school counselor and social worker and psychologist schedule times with students um, with classroom teachers to implement a conflict resolution program. Students learn how to choose an appropriate reaction to situations as it occurs. We have a Starts With Hello program, a, a great, kindness great Kindness Challenge, a Daily Kindness Message. And similar at the middle school, we have like Good News um, School Cards, uh, Grade Level Teaming, uh, the Sandy Hook Promise, Start With Hello program, High Five Fridays, Motivational Mondays, Health Units, um, um, Social Emotional Learning, uh, Preventing Bullying and Powering Bystanders, the Kindness Challenge, um, a variety of activities implemented during advisory block, cards for Palo cooperative activities. We have SROs in our school and we're so thankful for them. And they do presentations of, on a variety of uh, related topics. Our SROs work closely with students um, and teach uh, lessons in class. They um, are also in the cafeteria during in, uh, lunches. 
um, daily. We have social workers and guidance counselors that work very closely with our students on um, social emotional learning and, and skills. At the high school, this continues. The hand, Sandy Hook Promise, Start With Below program, the health unit on um, preventing bullying and, and prioritizing bystanders, the kindness challenge, um, guidance counselors assisting with students. We have a buddy group that meets monthly. North Smithfield High School recently added a new core value of inclusion. It was created by the students to um, and added to the previous core values to include, to make sure we include everyone. Um, I would, I would like to mention some of our students, their own work and what they've done and they've chosen to do our senior projects. Um, this year, we've had students that have done projects on um, a cause of homelessness and solutions, the Refugee Dream Center, Guatemala Service Project, Poverty in Haiti, Conversational Spanish, Teaching Spanish Language and Culture to Elementary Students, um, Challenges to Women in Politics and Around the World. One program I would like to highlight is the Meet in the Middle Diversity Project um, uh, at the high school, and it was co-developed by our chorus teacher, Regina McAdam, in 2016, and it was created in response to a need um, for a need for inner city and Title I schools to be represented at state music festivals. Uh, Regina had noticed that uh, uh, many of the same state uh, high schools were involved in the all state. Um, festivals and those from the city were not represented at all at all in conversation with uh, colleagues from across the state she learned that the lack of funding and lack of consistent curriculum for mu music programs in many districts had virtually made it impossible for some uh, schools to develop programs that would support students for auditioning um, for or being accepted into all state or solo um, ensemble festivals and so she got together and it was the teachers that got together and created a program called meet in the middle we have band and chorus students from five schools three inner city and two suburban schools um, they meet for rehearsals they um, they experience students the students with more music experience share videos of the instrument um, the instrument part to the students of their uh, partner school in order to expediate the learning process. And then um, they come together and they, and they have rehearsals, uh, local colleges, uh, Rima Band Festival and the annual state holiday um, concert have been venues for their final performances. Um, in addition, each of the schools has an opportunity to invite their partner school um, for their own school performances. And during distance learning, although it wasn't in the plan for the teachers, they were focusing on their distant learning courses, but it was the students that really wanted to do a project. And so the students actually were the ones that got together and did a, um, uh, a project where they came together and performed uh, virtually. And that was all uh, student motivated and student led. So that's, I think, uh, an amazing program. Kudos to Regina for that and, and the, her colleagues around the state. Another way that um, we uh, tackle social emotional learning and diversity, empathy, respect is through professional development. And you all may remember because we report out at school committee meetings that this year all of our teachers participated in a year long social emotional professional development series. Um, social emotional learning is the process through which uh, children and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, um, and make responsible decisions. Uh, social emotional learning uh, is just like math and reading. It's based on certain skills and also like math and reading, um, the social emotional learning skills uh, can and must be taught. Another uh, professional development series I'd like to highlight is um, throughout the year we've had numerous professional learning communities and a professional learning community is basically a group of teachers that come together to learn um, with a common ob objective and many times it's based on a book it's a book study um, to further our practice and this year a uh, professional learning community was established based on the book culturally responsive teaching in the brain it was a book study our one of our reading specialists at the elementary school actually facilitated it and i was um, thrilled to be part of it, it was an amazing um, professional learning community um, that i participated in um, the book um, culturally responsive teaching in the brain basically um, it it shares what what 
culturally responsive teaching is and what it isn't, the brain science to support this theory and ways we can develop a culturally responsive classroom. In the study, we discussed major topics um, covered in the text, like uh, ready for rigor frame, a protocol for checking unconscious bias, and discussions surrounding our own uh, personal cultural frames from each level and its surface, shallow and deep. It was a, it was a wonderful uh, PLC that I participated in. And when I went to um, a professional development advisory committee that we have to plan the next year's PD, we do it as a group, um, I shared uh, my experience and it was just a side conversation, but others were asking questions about it. And really by the end of the conversation, um, the team wanted to bring this to scale and bring it to the whole district. And so last January we had um, put it together and we have ordered books for every teacher in the district. It was grant funded through Title II, which was wonderful. And every teacher either has their book already at home or it's in their mailbox at school, but they're going to um, read the book over the summer. And then throughout the school year during professional development days, they're going to meet and um, had facilitated discussions. And the goal of the training is to introduce the concept of equity-minded teaching and learning, promoting a culture of validating students' identities and culture, engaging students in academic work, recognizing student capacity. The facilitated discussions will focus on um, like meaningful implementation of multiple teaching approaches. Uh, faculty will be able to analyze their classroom data, disaggregated data by race and ethnicity, and then make changes to their curriculum and teaching practices using a culturally responsive uh, teaching and learning framework. And finally, I want to mention that we also have to think about strategic planning and that um, within our district strategic plan, when we think about all these initiatives that we have, or all these, these things that we do, it's not um, part of it is because we strategically plan for it. And so one of our strategic plan goals is um, that all students will learn an environment that embody a culture and climate of excellence, mutual respect, and safety. And uh, the strategies that um, we have for that is that we're going to provide a system and support um, to access effective health and safety programs, promote activities to engage and energize students to participate fully in their education, uh, implement programs that foster the characteristics of healthy emotional attitudes and behavior, promote positive student um, attendance, build strong relationships among students, school resource officers, health professionals, teachers, administrators, and communities, access and review and practice um, district and school safety protocols. And we measure that and we have metrics that we use to measure that through survey work surveys, locally developed um, screening surveys, attendance and behavioral data, student achievement data, ongoing input from our school improvement teams, our school council, um, councils, our wellness committee, annual reviews um, that, that we ha have, ha have already established. And so when we think about where we are and where we're going, um, I think it's definitely a time of reflection and it's a time that we wanna to come together and just have good conversations about um, what we're doing. I'm, I'm thrilled that we're you know, starting our professional um, learning this summer and that um, we're starting to have some hard conversations and reflective conversations. And what we want to do is continue to do what we do well but always extend and refine. And so that was pretty much my conversation with um, Mr. Jones, but he had asked that I, I share it with you. And he said, you know, I hear all of these initiatives throughout this, the year, but having them together, um, it's, it's a nice way to reflect on it. And so that's what I wanted to share. Did I sum, did I sum up our conversation well, Mr. Jones? Yeah, you did very, very well, Claire. Yeah, and, and thank you. It, it, you know, we don't want to take it for granted that as school committee members, we hear so much um, about what the district is doing, which is which is so good. But to give it this full picture for the for the public as well and public consumption, and it's going to be posted online now. I think it's just another opportunity for our town to reflect and say, you know we are doing a great job in so many ways. Yes, there's there's always more work to be done, but 
look at where we've come so far. And I think it's going to help a lot of people feel really good about what we're doing as a, as a district in the town. Leah, thank you. Anyone, anyone have any comments? Um, I know that there, this isn't a public hearing, but I know that there are people uh, here listening. If anybody um, wants to make a comment or anything, please, please feel free. Um, Hello, yes, this is Bobby Bradford. Mr. Bradford. And Go ahead. Hello, how are, you? how are you, Jim? Good, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. And I just want to say that um, you know, as, as a, a black citizen of, of North Smithfield, I was very happy to hear uh, what Claire had to say. i um, happy that you and Mr. Jones also brought this to the table to be, uh, to be recognized by the, the board there. And I got, I, I'm, I'm extremely excited about what I just heard from Claire and I, and I really appreciate the town. Um, I, I'm just gonna say flat out, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. I'm, as a citizen of this town, I'm very proud. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You, Bradford. Mr. Bradford. Yes. You made my day. <laughs> well, Claire made mine. Thank <laughs> you both. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments, questions? I don't want to miss anyone. So if anybody sees anything, please let me know. All right, we'll move on um, to the next item on the agenda. I will I will keep on teacher recalls. Superintendent, um, you have some good news for us? Uh, not at this time. <laughs> you set me up. Yeah, but what we were hoping. All right, sorry. All right, so we'll move back to the beginning of the agenda, the consent agenda. Um, item number two, does anybody have anything they wanna pull off the consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded. Peg, did you second that? I did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, superintendent, if you want to have the uh, reports for discussion only, I guess they're in the file. If anybody wants to review them. Uh, this is all. Um, oh, do you want to have anything? Do you want to say anything on these? These are all within your jurisdiction. We on the, uh, the personnel appointments or are we up in reports? Reports. Reports. Uh, just just a couple of items here. Uh, we today was the last day of school. We uh, we we pivoted to distance learning. Uh, I was going to say we got through it, but we did we did more than just get through it. I think we we, we did really well. And obviously there there were some children and families who struggled with the uh, the whole distance learning concept. Uh, but I am just absolutely thrilled and proud of our, our students, our teachers, our parents, our entire community for supporting each other through this. Uh, to that effect, um, I have asked the principals to, be, uh, to, to, to come on board and just thank those who really stood out, who helped with the events, who, who just went above and beyond. Uh, so if, if I could start from the high school, uh, Mr. McGee, would you mind, uh, are there some folks that you'd like to thank? Well, I almost feel bad singling out some people because they all did such a great job. But, uh, if I had to pick a few, I, I would say, uh, Regina McAdam and Kevin Pluff went well above and beyond because they, they videotaped all these performances and then they, on their own time, they put it all together to make concerts. In fact, I'm going to a concert right after this at the Rustic Drive-In tonight that they're, yeah. they're putting together. So that was one group that kind of went above and beyond. Um, I think about Mark Hickox. He, he started his lessons with music in the morning to try to get the kids up and motivated. So he was doing whatever it took to try and get, get the kids in the game and so forth. And then I, I really want to shout out to Bill Pepin and, and Steve Boss too, because they're the guys behind the scenes making it all happen. They're making phone calls home to parents. 
they're they're letting parents know what 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 the students are doing, what they're not doing, what they need to do, and so forth. And sometimes those people don't get the recognition that they need uh, or they deserve, but uh, they're the ones that actually get the people up and running. So if I had to pick out a few, that would be a few. But I I, I don't want to sell any of my faculty short. They they all did an amazing job, and I'm I'm very very proud of them. Hey, Mr. Bahar. All right. Uh, I agree with Tim. It's hard to single a few people out. I think our staff did an amazing job. Um, to me, I'm thinking more event-wise than person-wise, but just a few people to give some, some public praise to. Uh, Brittany Papineau put together uh, an eighth grade graduation video for all the eighth grade students. We had a little watch party um, and a big virtual kind of step up dance slash ceremony type of thing last week. Uh, the video was amazing. She got hundreds and hundreds of pictures and put together an amazing presentation. Um, it was great of her. All of our team leaders, they did award ceremonies for all the kids today, and they kind of tailored the awards to distance learning and had like distance learning heroes and really try to recognize the kids for their effort and their struggles during distance learning and give them the credit that they deserved. I think they would have liked to have uh, given a few parents some unsung hero awards. Um, as well for the work that they put in. Um, our guidance counselors and Mrs. Lopes for, you know, some kids who struggled or weren't super active in distance learning, they did a great job of, you know, contacting those kids, contacting those parents. Where are you? We didn't see you today. When are you going to be back? We're missing stuff from you. In a very kind, how can we help um, way, and we're here to support you, and we want you to participate. Um, but really engaging all of our families and especially keeping an eye on some of our families that seem somewhat distant, disengaged. They did a great job. Um, Jen and Rachel at the elementary school, they did a bang up job of keeping the fourth graders kind of appraised as to what was going to happen moving into fifth grade. And we were able to do some Facebook live events with Jen and Rachel at NSCS on some Saturday mornings to answer some questions and we took the kids on a virtual tour this weekend to allow them to at least get some comfort with the building and get some information uh, on next year. By now, we would have had the kids in for a whole day. We would have had the parents in for a night. So Jen and Rachel really stepped up to make sure that those fourth graders um, had information that they needed. Harley Mitchell, our life skills teacher, um, did a, just an amazing job with her group. Going to see her meets was the highlight of my day on many days to see the excitement and enthusiasm and the work that her kids were doing in that program. She had like a little virtual field day for them where they were kind of doing some like minute to win it games and like blowing a cotton ball across the table and flipping bottles. And it was just amazing to watch the stuff that she was able to do for our neediest population from afar. Um, that, that, that was amazing. Our team leaders did a great job keeping their teachers together, keeping their kids together, putting their awards together. Um, they, we had a couple of fifth grade teachers did some virtual field day stuff too. So as a whole, I could not applaud my staff more for what they did. Um, and as a result of it, just parents coming to pick up stuff from lockers. The number of thank yous, oh, our teacher assistants, they were in five or six times doing locker pickup and they organized all the, every locker number and the custodians for cleaning out the lockers. They were all in bags and numbered and the teacher assistants lined them up and put them together. And then we had a drive through pickup for people to pick up and drop off stuff. And the teacher assistants were amazing. They all came in and were just great. Um, so for me, as much as the whole COVID thing has been a nightmare for a lot of people in a lot of ways, it has brought out the best in us as a school department and it's allowed us to really shine and see the best in our staff, our parents, our kids. So as much as I'd rather be in school every day, the, just the knowledge to know that when a crisis hits, the way that our community responds as a whole head on full speed just makes me proud to be part of this community and I couldn't say thank you more to each one of them. That's wonderful. Uh, Jen and Rachel, who are on screen together, who are always together, who are celebrity stars of Facebook Live on Saturday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just uh, finished delivering our certificates to all of our fourth graders as they're getting ready to move up to the middle school. So we're actually still at school. Um, we're outside on the playground, though. So 
Um, so I, I really have to echo what Tim and John have said. Um, I think as a member of this community and then as a member, a long-term time member of this school department, I could not be more humbled to work with such talented individuals. And I'm talking every everywhere from our teachers to our uh, instructional assistants to our social services staff, staff to our special educators to our, in, um, our custodians to our facilities. Every single person that we've come in contact with that throughout the past three months have totally stepped up their game. A little differently than the middle and high school, um, our teachers really had to step outside of a lot of comfort zones. Um, here at the elementary school, we do introduce our kiddos to technology, but so much of what we focus on is really just that face-to-face, in-person, touch type interactions and to have to turn from that immediately to moving to an online platform is a struggle and you know it definitely took our staff some time to adjust to that because that's not why we get into elementary school we get into elementary school for the touches and the hugs and the little the little snotty noses <laughs> there's a reason why we do this so um to have to move so quickly to something like that we could not be any prouder of our staff for really stepping out of, outside of, of their comfort zone and doing this. We had kindergarten teachers who learned how to schedule Zoom meetings and record themselves for, um, for lessons. You know, we had first grade teachers that were sitting outside with kids on their lawn reading with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had second grade teachers who were sending weekly emails, video emails to their students congratulating them on their work. You know, both our third and fourth grades were holding daily Zoom meetings and really our main focus at our level was really keeping that connection piece because that was so critical for us. Mm -hmm. Academics aside, we're going to pick them up and we're going to get them exactly where they need to be, but we needed them to know that they still have a school and that they still have a home and they still have people who loved and cared for them and they absolutely did that so to say we can highlight any one person we absolutely could not um our school is a family and um this there's no other family i think that both rachel and i feel like we we better deserve so um it was it was a really a, like like john said it was a really challenging experience but um with the help of our families and and our wonderful students and our staff you know we definitely got through it Thank you. So I, I, I hope um, you know, I, the school committee already knows this, but I hope you really appreciate the uh, this team that uh, we have together here. Um, you know, I've worked at a couple of other districts, larger ones, and uh, I've met a number of fantastic administrators, principals, teachers, but I have to, you know, and, and I'm not just making this up. It, 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 there is such a concentration of talent in North Smithfield. Uh, that really genuinely makes this an amazing place to be. So it's, uh, you know, from, from the work the principals have done and the department heads and Claire and uh, again, you know, with our families and, and the students, it's, it's, uh, it's been a remarkable little journey that we've been on for the past uh, three months. And I have to say, going forward into next year there's there's a number of things that we've done uh, as a district as a community that's just going to make us even stronger going into next year superintendent thank you and uh thank you everyone i i, I can't echo enough superintendent yourself and all of our staff we have an unbelievable staff i mean it's it's just it's just great to see makes our job a lot easier. So <laughs> we just take credit for it. Oh, the schools are doing great. <laughs> now, would you like to hear about next year? Sure. I am going to try to keep this upbeat, although there is so little information we have at this stage, uh, but I am highly confident that uh, we're gonna pull this together. So the governor, last week uh, announced the goal of having almost all students back 100 percent now the key is almost all students because we do have to make a number of modifications so the department of ed the state uh, department of health are going to require that all school departments uh, put together three different plans one plan is for a full reopening uh, in on august 31st the first day of school 
The second plan will be for a partial or hybrid reopening. So if we can't get everybody in, who do we focus on? You know, what grade levels, what special needs students? Um, and then the third plan is that if the virus is widespread at the end of the summer, uh, we open under an improved distance learning. However, the goal is for a full reopening to get all the students back. Uh, along with that come uh, uh, certainly a number of challenges. So for example, we will be having restrictions on class sizes. We will be having restrictions on how students can move within a school. Uh, there will be a focus on uh, st standardized groupings of students. So for example, what, what the Department of Health is going to try to avoid is that if one or two students get COVID in a, in, in a building, the whole building doesn't close. Uh, so for example, at the elementary level, the focus will be on having students in a standardized group, a, a pod, a classroom. So those students stay with those students in that classroom. They don't necessarily mix with students in the rest of the building. Uh, we have to restructure the way hallways are used. We have to restructure cafeterias. We have to restructure PE. Uh, we have to accommodate for a tremendous amount of cleaning. We have to uh, accommodate that we can't have students touching a lot of shared classroom materials like we do. So we probably have to purchase additional materials. Uh, we can't have students stuff touching each other student stuff. So we have to look at cubbies or, or storage containers, uh, compartmentalizing things. So just going through the list, we, we have to be incredibly creative and very frugal because some of these uh, uh, changes will, will, will come with a financial impact. Uh, you know, whether it's in transportation, whether it's in um, how we release students to home, running uh, distance learning concurrently with classroom learning for those kids who have to be quarantined or teachers who have to be quarantined for some matter. So we're going to go into the fall with a system that is going to try to accommodate all students, bring them in, but on a dime, we can pivot to uh, hybrid distance learning or some, uh, uh, some aspect that uh, gives us uh, maximum flexibility. So at the end of this week, the Department of Ed will be releasing a sort of a, a, a set of minimal guidelines. Uh, by July 17th, we're going to have to be submitting our plan for review. And the Department of Ed, Department of Health, the governor's office will give feedback on those plans. I guarantee that our plan is going to be brilliant. You know, it, it's we, we went through this with distance learning. We submitted something that was so far ahead of its time. I really anticipate we're going to do some something very similar. Uh, we do have committees that have formed and we're starting to build these frameworks. So we have a, a group of uh, 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 teachers and administrators and we're going to, and I should say, we're going to open this up to a, a, a community, school committee, other stakeholders in the town. But right now, we're just trying to put this core into place, and we're waiting for that guidance to come in from the Department of Ed. Uh, and then we can formalize it and extend it. But extend it. But we have a group now looking at logistics, transportation, facilities, and operations. You know, that includes the cleaning, the busing. Uh, just uh, trying to keep st students separate. How do we take a classroom that small and rearrange it so that stu students are six feet apart? How do we take a, a, a standardized group of students who may be 30 students, uh, that's one of the standardized groups they're looking for. We could have two standard groups in a gymnasium, all right? But they have, those two groups have to be at least 14 feet apart at all times. So th there's just a lot of restructuring we have to do on how we move students throughout the day, how we pick up and how we drop off. Uh, we have a committee uh, looking at health and wellness and social emotional well-being. Uh, that's made up of uh, nurses, administrators, teachers, and again, we're going to extend that out. Uh, we have a group that's looking at curriculum instruction and technology. So what does what do lessons look like? Well, first of all, what are the gaps? What did the students maybe miss while on distance learning? What do they need to make up when they come back? Uh, 
what's the, how, what's the best way to get kids ramped up? How do we restructure classroom uh, uh, instruction in the event that maybe five kids have to be taking the class from home because they're being quarantined or they have uh, a pre-existing health condition, so they have to be from home? Um, and the technology, how can we improve the technology to do even more, to reach even more, to, to have more capabilities? And then finally, we have a committee looking at human resources, finance, and school committee. How do we uh, engage the community and, 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 and work on this messaging so that we're all moving in the same direction? Uh, the finances, uh, we did get some good news from the, uh, the state today because we were, we were, we were uncertain on what state aid to education would be. Uh, it looks like it's going to be at the FY20 uh, level this year uh, with an additional 230, 218,000, 218,000. So that still means we have to make a significant amount of cuts uh, depending where the town uh, comes in with the local appropriation. So we still probably have to cut. Uh, another three, four hundred thousand um, dollars. Again, depending where depending where the town comes in. One of the things that I do not have solid information on is the state has created these pots of money uh, for COVID-related expenses. Uh, some of them come from the Federal CARES Act. Now. Originally, they were going to take $42 million of, the, uh, uh, of that relief aid and apply it towards COVID-related expenses for uh, education because we know cost of transportation is going to go up, cost of cleaning is going up, cost of supplies are going up. Um, they did up it from 42 to 50 million recently. And, but here's where we're uncertain right now that we need to get some clarification. The state made up some of its shortfall in revenue in state aid to education by using the COVID money, by using the federal money. So the, the result is that our state aid has gone up 218,000. However, there was this other pot of money, uh, a grant related uh, uh, pool of money that you went for districts with exceptional COVID expenses, again, additional cleaning, additional transportation, that there would be an application process to get some of that reimbursement. We're uncertain if that 218 that we're getting in state aid includes the COVID money. Um, you know, so is it an additional 218 in state aid and that has to cover all of our COVID expenses as well, or is it 218 in state aid and then there's some monies available for the extra PPE and cleaning and, and transportation. Um, I was on a call with the governor uh, and the superintendents just prior to this meeting, and we did kind of leave with that question. So um, I'm going to try to clarify this because I know as we go in through uh, the budget public hearing and, and, and the town is trying to balance its budget and we're trying to run a level budget, uh, we have to have all those uh, pieces in place. We also are trying very hard to get projections on the, this additional cleaning supplies that we need. Um, a lot of these things are back ordered until the first of the next year, uh, until January 1st. So we're looking at statewide purchasing. Uh, we did get a, a word today that the RIDE and the Department of Health may have uh, a thousand uh, uh, infrared uh, uh, thermometers, uh, temperature scanners available for schools to distribute. So things like that help tremendously, but we're still trying to get a hold on what the expenses are, what it's going to look like. Uh, this will be a moving target based on the guidance from the Department of Health and, you know, and again, it's that dual role of trying to get everybody back into school to do everything we can to support and restart the economy so parents can go to work, but also not, not to create super clusters of disease spread uh, within our schools because our schools are designed to sort of pack kids tightly and we're trying to do the opposite of that right now. So, but all I can say is that I have absolute confidence that uh, 
North Smithfield, we're going to be thinking out of the box and we're, we're, we're actually looking at things that are going to be improving instruction in North Smithfield and not trying to uh, uh, get around limitations due to uh, uh, regulations or, or the virus spread. Uh, again, we're gonna come out of this much better. Uh, we may have to make sacrifices, we may have to make some adjustments, we may have to make cuts, but ultimately we're going to come out better. Great. Thank you, Superintendent. Can I just maybe just make a clarification? So you said that we're going to get $218,000 more from the state. Correct. In the so state the, aid to education. Right. So the, 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 um, the budget that we put in that's before the town council right now has no additions. As a matter of fact, it has subtractions, correct? Correct. Now, that's at a 4%. Increase. Um, so if we get 4%, technically we'd be up possibly a hundred, couple of hundred thousand? Yes. Okay. So right now the administrator is looking at like 2% or, or two point change percent? 2.2 was the last number I had heard. Okay. And if that were to stand, we would have to make substantial cuts. Is that correct? Uh, Even think, with the two hundred and eighteen thousand, I think it would be about uh, four hundred thousand. Is that about right, Lisa? So that's substantial in our district. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, that's and about right, and again, yeah, it's about four hundred thousand. And again, we don't know the full extent of the COVID-related expenses. Right, uh, but, but even even in the best case scenario. If we have to cut four hundred thousand dollars, we're gonna that we cut into the bone at this point. Correct. Uh, we we made significant cuts in the past three years, and especially last year with the closing of Hallowell. Uh, you know, my my intent this year, our intent this year on the budget was not to ask for any new positions, nor uh, nor give up any, because we I, I think, uh, and, and I've said that. I think we're at a, a, a good place where we're balancing the needs of the students, the requirements of, uh, of, of the Department of Ed, along with being the fiscal responsibility uh, to the town. So we're trying to run things very tight and, and, and keep it as lean as possible. But we can't afford a four, an additional 400,000. We cut into math interventionist, ELL, right? I mean, we, we'd really cut into programs that have helped us tremendously get to where we are. Correct. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, this is, uh, just to the super, Mr. Superintendent, do you, uh, I don't, I'm not asking for details, but have you been in touch with some of like our, you know, I know you said we have a school reopening team for me. I don't know if you use that term, but it sounded like a school reopening mm -hmm. team for me. Have we been in any contact with, in terms of dialogue with like our food vendors, our bus vendors, uh, you know, people who we purchase services from, the amount of which may really vary significantly depending on whether or not we are a hybrid opening, distance versus full opening. I mean, you, just, just the busing. I know busing's a, I'm very concerned about uh, the, ram the ramifications of if everybody comes back and what we have to do pursuant to the busing, how we, how we space all the busing out. Are there any conversations with the vendors again on how that would work or is it just kind of at our school level at this point? Yeah, uh, right. Uh, uh, Boroughville and North Smithfield are the two districts uh, that, that use DATCO. The rest of the state, uh, uh, it's either uh, uh, Durham or First Student. So yes, um, where Boroughville and I, uh, North Smithfield meeting with DATCO tomorrow uh, to, to take a look at the busing. The, 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 the transportation, the busing is the biggest concern uh, amongst all the superintendents right yeah. now because <laughs> under the current uh, uh, CDC guidance, uh, we're looking at the recommendation is one student every other seat. Yeah. Uh, so that takes a, a bus that can fit 70, 72 students that has 24 seats or so. Uh, that means we run an entire bus with 12 students. Now, we're paying about a million dollars for transportation between statewide transportation to transport kids out of district, which we've been told by statewide 
uh, they're going to have to run additional buses to do uh, additional separation of our kids who are, are, are especially our, our special ed kids who, you know, have uh, medical issue, yeah. issues that have to be accommodated. Uh, but even within our own district, uh, to spend $800,000 to transport only 12 kids at a time on a bus becomes uh, financially unfeasible. Uh, it may, the guidance may increase to 24 students on a bus. Even at that, we don't have enough bus capacity to transport elementary, middle, and high school students at 24 students to a bus. We don't have the option of adding more buses because each bus we add to the fleet costs another $80,000. That means we cut another teacher or another program to buy another bus. Um, and that assumes that there are buses to be had or drivers to be had. The bus companies already have a hard time hanging on to drivers. Uh, one of the, the, the things I heard today was to increase bus monitors on the buses to make sure students, say, are sitting one to a seat looking forward. They wash their hands when they get on. They wash their hands when they get off. Uh, again, that's an unbudgeted expense. I don't know if there would be additional, you know, CARES Act COVID money to pay for additional bus monitors, to pay for additional custodians, to pay for uh, all these additional supplies, let alone uh, pay for additional buses if we need to. So we may be at a point where we reopen. Uh, we may be asking a lot of parents, if you, if you do not need to ride a bus, if it's a matter of convenience, please trans bring your kids to school directly. Uh, it may not be an option for us. Uh, adding a third bus run would add another 400000 to yeah. the budget. You know, if we have to stagger our school opening so that elementary, middle, and high school all open at different times and we bring in another bus run, that's another 400000 Again, that's that's th those are funds that just aren't there. So, like I said, it. I think from the, the instructional standpoint, we can do amazing things. It's, it, it's the logis logistics and financials that really concern me. Um, that I'm hoping to, 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 to bring up magic and work around. I don't know if we would have to say, for example, stagger schedules where uh, a group comes in one day, another group comes in the other day, say at the high school. I mean, there are different models and options out there and we're just waiting for the guidance from Department of Health and a sense of what things look like at the end of the summer and how far and how fast we can go. Yeah, Mr. Chair, and Superintendent, and members of the committee. Yeah, that I appreciate what the superintendent just spoke about because that was what was on my mind when I looked at everything. The bus team, what was worrying me the most when I saw the guidelines, wondering how we would do that. Uh, and I know we're on it, and uh, I do have some ideas. At some point, maybe I could uh, about the superintendent with the chair's permission. I'll share them with you. You know separately or at an appropriate time maybe when the committee maybe when you're you sir are on a committee <laughs> okay <laughs> fine <laughs> happy to thank be you up. thank you congratulations <laughs> uh, never volunteer right <laughs> <laughs> no but i think that i i do know that um i i did have a chance to talk to rod last week and i know this reopening committee were a big thing trying to get them going i'm assuming you're talking our reopening committees right yes yeah and i know that uh, i'm so glad to hear that we're I knew we would be on it, and that uh, I just think it's a, a real challenge. And not to reiterate that, everybody knows that. I mean, all the other cafeterias, I mean, eating's another challenge. Uh, but I do, I do think, frankly, I think our challenge is going to be more with the younger kids than with the older kids. I'm, I'm not as worried about the high school. I'm more worried about the elementary school, to tell you the truth. But that's just me. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Superintendent, do you have anything else on the reports? I apologize for trying to cut you off. I jump to the next one. <laughs> you may jump to the next one now. <laughs> okay. So this next one's for informational purposes, and uh, it's the um, it's for it's under the authority of the superintendent. Does anybody have any questions for the superintendent? Did you want to say anything, superintendent? These are the folks that have stepped forward to work in our summer extended uh, school year program uh, for special education. So we will be running it virtual as well. Great. Thank you. Um, old business, the fiscal year 20, uh, you did give us 
just gave us, I mean, well, you gave us some information on 21. Um, does anybody have any questions in regards to the operating budget for 20 or 21? Or does anybody from the administration want to need, to need to comment on it? Jim, I'd just like to ask if we could schedule a meeting for June 30th. Hopefully we'll have a budget to maybe approve and to also settle up the disbursements. And recalls. And recalls. Hmm. So uh, is everybody free on the 30th? Or is, what, the, the 29th or whatever day we can get together? I'll, I'll do my best. I might have something on the 30th, but I'll, I'll do my best. I think the town's meeting on the 29th, so um, I'm not so sure that would be a good day. What, the 29th? I think that's the day that they're voting on the budget. Um, I, I would think that some of the districts are going to extend that, but uh, absolutely, I mean, we can schedule the, we can schedule it for the 30th at 6.30. Does anybody have any problems with that? It's really to pay the bills and accept a, and adopt a budget, I assume. So hopefully it'll be a quick meeting, hopefully. Yeah. All right. Um, we do have a joint meeting with the town council on Thursday in regards to the uh, bond. Um, superintendent and I have been working on that. Um, we'll have a presentation ready to go. Anybody have any, any additional questions, concerns? Sure, I know they're voting. Mr. Est? You unmute, Mr. Est? Go ahead. Under reports, did we skip over graduation and senior yeah. activities results <laughs> on purpose? <laughs> Superintendent? Oh, those were the public thank yous. Oh, okay. Well, I want to speak to that. But <laughs> oh, go ahead, Mr. Go Connell. Ahead. On the thank not, yous? It's for discussion only, so we're not voting on it. Oh, okay. Well, well you know, I'll be very brief. Uh, but there were just so many people who should be thanked for uh, so many things, and I'm not going to believe it, but uh, among our own uh, fellow committee members, I believe Chris uh, did some masks, and uh, I know a lot of people put together, put masks together. Uh, you know, National Market put a lot, did a lot with the uh, signs all over town, and not just, I believe, not just for the seniors, but they also did some great signs, and uh, for the middle school kids and also my teacher misses me, which I believe will geared to the younger students. And I really, uh, oh, and also, also our police and fire helped a lot, both at the graduation and also at the senior parade. They were, they were both police and fire escorts for the parade, which really we would have had to do without that. And they were also present at the graduation. So, you know, the danger of going in these recognitions is there's so, so many people to thank and so many people contributed. Uh, it's just that it, I just want to comment that everybody contributed, everybody, so many people helped out. And I really think that the town came, it was really a town wide event. I really sense it was a town wide event. All the teachers who uh, were cited by the principals, uh, I know, and I, I saw what they did, at least at, least at the high school level, because you know, I have uh, involvement there. And I know things were going on at the middle school with the eighth graders. It was such an unprecedented time. And I think that at the end of the day, from what I heard, the kids were at least, they felt pretty good about how things wound up. And, un, and considering where we were in April, uh, the senior had good last week, and that was the award ceremony with the parade, with the concert, with the uh, graduation. There was a concert last week and there's one tonight too. All those things, that's a really good job that the district did. Let me tell you, the fireworks at the end of the graduation <laughs> ceremony, just... spectacular, and really did not earn us any friends with all the other districts across the state that didn't do anything <laughs> half as awesome. Well, it, it was a fabulous <laughs> evening and something that the kids will never forget. And just thank you to everyone who had anything to do with it. It was wonderful. Oh, I want to mention... Ann Lilly, I think she made some masks for a lot of the kids. I think that's worth mentioning too. 
And Frida Hanley also helped her. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, that's a lot of masks. All the kids had masks. That was important. So and, I wanted to and, and Stanley Zuba? Yeah, oh, yeah, with the flag, absolutely. Yeah, he, 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 he donated. He, 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 he supported the, uh, that giant screen. Yeah, and the flag at the... Um, Yes, at, that's right. At, at, the, at the parade. See, this is the thing. When you start, you know, when you start naming people and you don't have a list in front of you, you're going to miss somebody. That's what I'm worried about. But right. yeah, all right. those people, just, just what a great, it was really a town event. Oh, I mean, was, the whole thing was town wide. At the beginning, there was a, like an introduction crawl that went up. And at the very last thing, it says it takes a village to make a Northman. <laughs> <laughs> we had, I'll bet you we had uh, 50 different uh, outfits helping us out with various things. We had... Like you said, the Zubas do donated the screen and the FM transmitter. We had people donating generators. We had people, all, all my faculty, just so you know, I, I, I was hoping that it was going to broadcast live. We had a little technical glitch with that. But I told my faculty that they weren't invited unless they wanted to come to work. And I had about 12 of them show up just to work. And they were parking cars and getting everybody situated. I had uh, poor Claire Arnold. She was nervous for me. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, Claire kept saying, is it going to work? Is it? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping, you know. And uh, the weather was perfect. Uh, it, I, I asked police and fire about, you know, for permission to do it. It would have been very easy to say no because of the circumstances. They allowed it. When we asked about fireworks, uh, initially I was told by Chief, Chief Shadia, yeah, there's no way in hell that's going to happen. And uh, they asked the fire marshal of the state, and he said, well, I'll do anything I can to help the kids. So we got to pass on that. I mean, it just... One thing after another, just it, it all kind of fell into place and everybody did their piece and it, and it, and it worked out. So I, I couldn't be any happier with the way it turned out. It may very well be the only public fire display all summer. <laughs> yeah. mm. it, I do think that I'd like to just take a second, and I know he hates this, but to recognize Tim. He <laughs> had so many oh. balls juggling in the air and I was incredibly nervous for him. <laughs> uh, but to say he worked morning, noon, and night is an understatement, and the sure. number of people he had to work with in the, um, was extraordinary. So it would not have happened without Tim McGee. Um, so thank you, Tim. That was pretty amazing what you pulled off. You're welcome. Sure. Thank you. I, I posted this picture of Tim just about 20 minutes before the graduation was starting. And he was yeah. in his jeans with his tool belt and his flannel <laughs> up on the scaffolding, fixing something, you know, just trying to break away so he could put a suit on and look, and look respectable for a change. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Reminded me of the old days. <laughs> Sheer force of will made it happen. <laughs> oh, um, can I make one last name? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, Rob Skinner, the senior class advisor. He yeah. was a real... I know Rob, but I think he was a real driving force behind a lot of this too, keeping the kids motivated, keeping the kids focused. As he pointed out, they had a lot of things planned that they had to jettison because of obvious mm -hmm. reasons. But at least they had a, a lot did come together. In the la that last week was a pretty, you know, as a parent of a senior, there was a lot of fun things going on that last week. So virtually <laughs> and in person. <laughs> so thanks to everybody. Thank you. Is there any further business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Don't move. Second. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thank you.